Hello, welcome to Peaky Assist. In this video, we will learn how to use LoopBlock in the Email Builder for sending dynamic content blocks through email or display dynamic blocks in the mini apps. Let's understand what are the few use cases you can build using the Loop feature. Sending an invoice. Mostly all invoice consists of line items, that is for each customer the number of items they have ordered varies, so using the Loop feature, we are able to show the items they have ordered dynamically while sending an email or WhatsApp or we can display the details in the mini app. Getting the order details of a customer. Now let's take another situation where your agents want to quickly check all the orders of a specific customer while they are assisting the customer on Teambox. When they input the email address in the mini app, the system will make an HTTP request to your e-commerce store at the background and fetch all the order and display as shown here. It's time to learn how to build loop blocks. The first thing for building a loop block, we need a data source that is using which data the system should build a block. The data source can be an inbound connector payload that comes from another platform when an event happens like when an invoice is created or a new order created. The data source also can come as a response of an HTTP request API you mix inside the connector. In order for the loop block to work, the data source must be an array and should be in JSON structure. Those who are non-technical, let me explain array and JSON format in a simple way. An array is a collection of items that are stored in a single unit and can be referred to by a single name. Imagine you have an Excel spreadsheet with a list of employees and their information, such as name, age, and salary. You can represent this information as an array, where each row represents an individual employee and each column represents a different piece of information, name, age, salary. The first column could represent the index, example, employee 1, employee 2, employee 3, etc. To access an individual employee's information, you would use the index to locate the correct row, and then access the relevant column for the information you want, example, employee 3's age would be found in the third row second column, this way, you can store and manage a large amount of related data in an organized manner and easily access specific information when you need it. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which is a way to represent data in a format that is easily readable and understandable by both humans and computers. It's similar to a dictionary or a list where you have a set of keys and values. Imagine you have a collection of people's names and their favorite colors. In JSON format, it will look something like this. In this example, each person is represented by a key person 1, person 2, person 3, and their information is stored as a set of key value pairs within curly braces. The keys represent the type of information, name, favorite color, and the values represent the actual data, John Doe, blue. With this information stored in JSON format, you could easily access and use it in different systems or applications. For example, you could use the information to display a list of people and their favorite colors on a website. Hope you have understood what is an array and how the data is exchanged between two software in JSON format. Now the theory is enough, let's dive into the setup. To get started, go to connector, then create a connector. For this connector, the data source will be Shopify order that is every time an order is created in Shopify, it receives the details in JSON format in the connector. I have already set up and configured this connector with Shopify. Now let's create an order in the Shopify. Let's order three items. Let me check out. All right, the order has been placed. Now go back to Peaky Assist, then refresh the logs. See, we got a new request. Let's see the request format. You can see plenty of information are available for this order. Now we are interested in the product details so that we can send an email to the customer. Shopify sends the product details in a variable named line items. You can see three entries are there starting with 012, which means three items and on expansion, you can see each product details. So whenever you see an array, it should be always in this format that starts with 0123. Now let's create a step in the connector, which can send the details of the order via email to the customer. Enable action, then click on add actions, then search for send email. Fill in all the details for sending the email, 
You can use the attribute to customize the subject of the body, email address, etc. Now let's create a new email template for this email, or you can select an existing template. Here you can select a template or create one from scratch. Let's use a predefined template to get started quickly. All right, we have the email editor ready now we need to make use of the loop section. So from the left hand side, from the action block drag and drop the loop into the editor. Inside this loop block, you can further build more content blocks. Let me drag and drop a text block into the loop block. Now you can see that we have a loop block and inside that a text block which will be looped when this email sends. Now we need to configure the loop block. To do this first select the loop block, then from the right side you can see the loop settings. The first option is loop limit. This is where you can define how many times the system should run the loop from the data. If you limit 10 then only the first 10 products will be sent to the customer via email. Now loop variable, this is just for reference and you can change the name. The width of the loop by default is 100%, but if you want to adjust the width you can put the percentage here. If we put the 50% width in a row you will able to see two data records. Based on your design layout you can adjust these settings. Next is the sample loop array. This is where you need to select the connector. In our case we have to select the Shopify connector. Then you have to select the loop array. You can see that the system automatically displays the data, which are in array format. And in our case, we need to select the array having line items. Now if you wish to personalize the loop block, you can do this from other settings. The next step is to map the array values inside the loop block so that they can replace the data with actual values when the loop is executed. For doing this, select the text block inside the loop block and you can see an attribute option here. Here the system will show all values inside the array we selected and you need to start mapping this to the builder. We want the product name, quantity, and price so let's select those and insert them into the builder. Now we have grand total. This is outside the loop so we simply type the total inside two curly braces and we will get the option to map this in the connector. The settings in the builder are now completed. Click on save. Let's recap the settings and how this works. We have created a loop block in the builder and mapped the loop block with a data source from the connector and we selected the variables which need to be looped from the array here. Now whenever an event is received from the Shopify store, the loop will automatically add more rows here, something like this the customer will see, and all the values will get replaced with the order details when the email is sent to the customer. Let's go to the connector to complete the attribute mapping. Find the step and click on Select Template. From the drop-down, select the template which we have created for the Shopify. Now here under the map attributes, you can see all the attributes which we created in the email builder. We need to map this with the attribute value from the Shopify so that the system can replace them with the actual value while sending the email. First, we have to select the loop array. This is same as we selected here in the email editor. So let's select line items as our loop array. When you select the loop array, you don't need to select the variable from the array as the system will automatically map them. Now let's map the other attributes. You may also select the opt out and unsubscribe list, which ensures that emails are not sent to customers who are unsubscribed earlier. In case if you are sending any marketing or promotional emails. Now let's test the entire setup. Let me create another order with two items. Great, we have received the email. You can see that all the attributes we mapped got replaced with the actual values and the line items which are in the array are looped here as it should be. So our integration is working as it should be. We have successfully learned how to create a loop builder in the email builder and use it with a connector. This method can be used for building mini apps as well. If you need any further assistances, then please post your questions in our Facebook community and our team will reply at the earliest. Thank you for watching this video.